Yes, right. Okay, good. <laughs> good evening. In the next step of fighting the, uh, the corona virus, I must outline the new rules for churches to ensure the, uh, the, the, the uh, safety of everyone and to protect the, um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the NHS, yes, protect the NHS. So, from 10.52pm on Wednesday, key workers will be able to enter a church building for, for free unless they are, they, are, they are above six feet tall. Young people aged 18 to uh, 23 must, uh, must not enter the, uh, the church building unless they have been to work, uh, a restaurant or a pub beforehand. During the uh, service you, uh, you, you cannot sing um, and, and unless the song is by an uh, awesome cutlery or by um, a, a, a Graham Kendrick. Once the, uh, the church service ends, you, you must make your way out of the building as instructed. But you can stay and, uh, and uh, chat afterwards to as, uh, as, as many people as you like for as long as you like. But I must, I, I, I must stress that you must ensure that you have left the church building by 8 p.m. Because coronavirus is at its most dangerous at 8.01 p.m. And yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, science backs this up. Right, well, uh, I, I, I think that's, uh, that's uh, quite clear. I, I, I think those points are very clear. Uh, I think that's it, that's it, uh, that's it for today. Um, I'm off to uh, play golf. Good day, good day. Okay, on a serious note, that was just a joke. But today we're going to be talking about following rules and how we should respect our government. There's lots of reasons we might not obey the government, but I think they come into three broad categories. Firstly, we don't like them or what they're saying. Especially at the moment, many people don't like the government. We don't like having restrictions on what we can and can't do, and they're not doing a great job of following their own rules either. So why should we? Well, there's a couple of places in the Bible that this topic comes up. In Mark chapter 12, some people asked Jesus about whether they should pay taxes to Caesar or not. At the time, the Roman government exploited those it controlled, so this would be a fairly understandable request. But Jesus basically tells them to go and do what the government says, even if they don't like it. Even more strongly, in 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority, or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. So as Christians, we're called to obey our authorities because that is God's will for us, whether or not we like them. So the next objection that we might have against following the government is that they're not doing the right job or they're not doing a good job. Um, and it's easy to criticise uh, world leaders, particularly in this time of coronavirus, for how they've handled it. And yeah, there's been mistakes, but this situation is totally new. No one, there's no rule book for how you deal with coronavirus. And so world leaders have had a really hard time trying to work out how to deal with coronavirus and yet also continue normal life. Ask yourself, would you do better in their situation? The Bible makes it clear that we should submit to our world leaders. Uh, in Romans chapter 13, uh, verse 1, it says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And this might be quite challenging for us because we kind of think, well, when we think of certain leaders, how can God have put them there? But actually, it's a real encouragement that God is ultimately in charge. There is no government that has authority without God having authority over it. And we should remember that no government is perfect. And God uses bad, bad authorities for his will. Uh, for example, back in the Old Testament, he used this empire called the Babylonian Empire. They didn't worship God, and yet God uses them to punish Israel because Israel's turned away from him. But it also used, uh, because of what happens, Israel turns back to God, and it's ultimately God's plan. 
Uh, so how should we respond to following our governments? Well, in Rome, I'll come back to Romans chapter 13, in verse 5 it says, Therefore it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. As Christians, we're to show honour and respect to those who have authority over us. Now, governments do bring order to society, which is a good thing, and we shouldn't deliberately break rules, as that doesn't show a good light on us as Christians. Um, you know, we are to, supposed to be respectful, we're supposed to be following the rules, and doing the right thing, really. And in this country, in the UK, we have a great privilege of being able to vote and also write to our MPs when we, ha when we want to raise issues with them. And so let's do that in a respectful way and for wanting a good outcome to help others. And we can pray for our governments. And finally, what they're saying goes against the Bible. This is a tricky one. There's no hard and fast rule on this, and it requires our judgment on whether we're being asked to do something against God. Civil disobedience is sometimes a good thing to do, but we need to carefully consider the circumstances before we disobey the government, as we've seen it's put in place by God, and following the government is one way we obey God's will for us. At the moment, we can't sing in church. Now, in the Bible, there's multiple places we're told to sing together, does that mean we should ignore the government and sing in church? No. Why not? Well, because the intention behind that rule is to stop the spread of coronavirus, not to stop the worship of God. However, there may be occasions on which disobeying the government in order to obey God is the correct thing to do. The book of Daniel in the Old Testament tells the story of Daniel and some of his godly mates who disobey the king's orders. This goes well for them initially, they didn't eat and drink all the gluttonous food and wine they were offered and instead ate only vegetables and they weren't punished but instead were chosen to enter the king's service. However, the story goes on and Daniel's mates get thrown into a fiery furnace for refusing to bow down and worship an idol the king has created. Then Daniel himself gets thrown to the lions for praying to God despite the law forbidding it and commanding people to pray and worship to the king instead. Clearly here, the message is to continue to worship God, despite what society tells you to do. And in this case, that meant disobeying the law. But it's important to remember that we're not alone. We're part of a church, and so we don't have to make decisions on civil disobedience in isolation. Another authority we're called to obey is our church leaders. So if you're worried the law is going against your faith, chat to your church or youth leaders, or even to your parents.